Hey guys, it's Tom Box. Welcome to MST.TV. And this is a ruling segment. It's been forever since we've done a ruling segment. So, well, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button because we want to stay up to date with the latest rulings and making sure that we're playing the game fairly and correctly. And if you guys want to correct me down in the comment section, feel free to do so. And I will respond by saying, yes, I am corrected or no, you're not correct because of so on and so forth. I don't know, PSCT, conjunctions, whatever. So, uh, aside from addressing some of the new stuff, I also want to address some of the older rulings that I've been seeing people misplaying quite a bit online, whether it be DB or on remotes. I've been lurking around in your Twitch. You guys have been seeing me more on Twitch lately. It's probably because of that. And yeah, I'll be addressing a couple of cards here and there, mainly because people are just still not maintaining the game state properly. So uh, a couple of things here and there. Maybe there's going to help you out in your upcoming tournaments online. Who knows? But what I do know is make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button, hit like, hit subscribe, ding notification bell to stay up to date with MSD.TV. Got a lot of stuff going on. More giveaways to come. Next giveaway would be a set of boxes. Three boxes out of the 12 will be the next one. It's not in this video yet, but it's coming up. And, uh, you know, quick little fun side story. If you guys really want help, check out my Patreon link down in the description. It will really help me out because... Uh, uh, I guess on Sunday, there was a, a drunk guy at 3 in the afternoon. He parked his car really close to mine. My car was already there. And he got really angry for some reason. And then he decided to vandalize my car door with his car door by banging it on purpose. Like, he, why we know it's on purpose is because he walked into the store saying, I'm going to hit your car. And I just said, can you not? And uh, he just purposely hit my car and this is the damage and I had to call the police. Yada, yada, yada. Long story short, have to deal with insurance and all that jazz. This is not fun. Like, totally ruined, ruined my day. So anyways, there's that. Well, but anyways, let's go on with a couple of rulings right now. Okay, starting with the most poorly maintained game state card, Herald of the Arclight. I mean, guys, come on, we've been playing with this card for a very long time. I mean, since Rock, I mean, beginning of the year to like now. This card has been seen play in a multitude of decks. Any deck that basically ran Needle Fiber, you will see this card being part of some sort of combo, okay? So, quick text read here. Any monster sent from the hand or main deck to the graveyard is banished instead. Basically, mini defissure from hand and deck, and it applies to both players. So anything that's sent from the field, on the other hand, can still hit the graveyard, which is a good thing, all right? And of course, it has the negation, omni-negation effect, where it can tribute itself, and it can negate the activation of a card and destroy it. And then if you're playing Necroz, you can, of course, fetch yourself an additional ritual monster or ritual spell because this card got sent to the graveyard. Okay, that basically covers the text here. What are the things that people are doing with this? People are just completely forgetting about this particular card's uh, restriction, which is, well, not restriction, but the game state that kind of forces people into. So first things first, remember you cannot pay cost when you have to send a card from hand to grave. You can pay discard cost unless that discard cost states that it has to be discarded to the graveyard. That is a clause that is pretty familiar to mermail base players because uh, it does say discard to the graveyard. In other words, it does state a location where the card has to go in the cost. Uh, in that case, it is more or less the same as send to the graveyard. So with that being said, Miscellaneous Saurus has a send to graveyard cost. You cannot activate Miscellaneous Saurus. What I've been seeing from this one is that uh, basically the Herald of the Arclight is already on the field and they attempt to summon out the OV Raptor. OV Raptor activates its effect only for it to get negated by another card. Then the dinosaur player chains the Miscellaneous Swords and throws it into the graveyard or banish pile. They know, in other words, they know that it is getting banished and uh, in other words, they're just illegally activating the card not knowing that of course you can't even activate it so yeah the effect of the ov raptor or whatever that is trying to protect won't get that kind of protection and will get negated or destroyed or in some way just affected by the card that is going after it so that is point number one so that's for dinosaur players as for non-dinosaur players let's go into the invoke side Remember that Mechaba has a send to graveyard cost. So in other words, when Herald of the Arclight is on the field, uh, the Mechaba cannot negate monster effects because you can't pay the cost of uh, negation. 
you have to send a monster from your hand, basically the matching type. So you can still negate spells and traps, but the monster on the other hand, because you can't send a monster from your hand to the graveyard, you will not be able to use Mechaba. That's actually a pretty common one, actually. I just see people like, oh, I'm just gonna send negate. Ooh, it's, it's it's over. Like doesn't work doesn't work that way and then there's also forbidden droplets forbidden droplets remember they can technically still negate monster effects just remember that it has to just send the monster from the field side to the graveyard because remember that it does not affect the field so i've seen people say oh you can't use droplets on monsters while herald no that's not entirely true it, you just can't send the monster from the hand they can still technically uh, send spells and traps uh, from the hand because herald of the arc light does not affect spells and traps uh, uh basically their destination from their hand uh or deck to the graveyard it only affects monsters so in that case spells and traps are still fine but regarding that of course the interaction would be that if they only sent you know spells and traps that means monsters can still interact with that card therefore herald of the arc light typically would negate and win that interaction so there's that and as for Dragon Link players, Dragon Link players, just remember that when you have your own Herald up, you can technically still banish your cards to the graveyard. Like, Brotar can still pay its cost because it's discard based and uh, you can still throw it. I've seen some people make slight misplays on their on their plays because they forget the Herald is on the board and they ended up actually banishing, say, the Safer that they threw into the... They were trying to fetch back a Chaos Dragon Levianir only for them to actually banish the Safer from their hand and then they actually aren't, a, aren't able to actually retrieve certain cards. It matters more when the game set had some level of disruption. Typically, if you actually throw away a Rocket Tracer, it doesn't really matter because Pisty can technically revive from the uh the banish pile as well and actually you know just segueing into the pisty this was one thing that i saw on pack stream it wasn't pack it was actually pack's opponent where i think pack might have had an interaction against him but um yeah guard dragon pisty uh does target anyways let's now jump into miscellaneous saurus just a couple of things. I just want to read the very first line and kind of emphasize on various key points in that very first line. During either player's main phase, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard. During this main phase, dinosaur type monsters you control, you control, are unaffected by your opponent's activated effects. That's the key line I kind of want to talk about. The other one, you guys kind of get how it works already. That other effect is a hard one to return, but this particular effect technically isn't. So what are the common, well, misplays are happening with miscellaneous horse first thing is people are not activating it within the main phase because uh, your opponent is using the ample window of the draw phase and the standby phase to affect stuff on your side of the field and it's actually quite important because it affects the game state quite harshly uh of course that's the first key thing here is that if someone tries to imperm some of your cards during the standby or the draw phase it's quite important even sometimes the battle phase typically i don't see people, people remember that they can't uh, activate it in the battle phase, but they sometimes forget that they can't use it during the draw phase or the standby phase either. This is not a card that you can preemptively throw into the graveyard, but you can technically throw it in during an open game state. But if people are flipping like floodgates, like macrocosmos or stuff that's pretty annoying, uh, yeah, just remember that. This card also has a send based cost, as mentioned before from Herald of the Arc. Like if Herald is on the field, this card cannot activate its hand to grave effect. So that's the key point here. Now, the other thing I kind of want to note is, of course, it only protects your monsters that are under your control. Monsters that are no longer on the field are technically not under your control. So uh, that's why the effect of Miscellaneous Saurus in the graveyard activating to banish itself and summoning on a dinosaur, that particular effect, even under Miscellaneous's effect, you can still technically uh, negate it with an Ash Blossom. You can hit it with a Gamma. Uh, it will still be affected in those particular locations. And finally, this is the one that kind of confuses some people. I mean, I've seen this actually multiple times. Shout out to Cody Angeloff, uh, because he's actually one of the ones that constantly pointed out, which is against dinosaurs, if you use a Phantom Knight's Fog Blade against, say, an Ovi Raptor and they chain Miscellaneousaurus, the Ovi Raptor is still technically negated because Fog Blade isn't an activated effect. It has an activation of the card to target your card basically target your dinosaur uh but 
the negation effect and the anti-attacking part of the entire effect, that's a continuous effect, much like skill drain. This is not like breakthrough skill where it applies onto the monster. The only application is that it's constantly targeting your monster and while it is still targeting your monster, your effect is still going to be negated. That is a continuous like effect um, and not a uh, activated effect so uh, there's that so just keep in mind there's different types of negation effect failure imperm all that stuff will not work for say or will not work under the circumstances of miscellaneous source but stuff like fog blade skill drain or anything that just you know permanently applies while the card is still face up those things will still apply to your dinosaur monsters and that's uh, actually quite important to kind of remember that if it's continuous like or continuous uh, miscellaneous does not protect those particular cards okay finally we're jumping into the phantom rage cards again talk about alpha the master of beast making sure that you guys play this card correctly we're going to break it down a bit by bit uh it cannot be normal summon or set must first be special summon from your hand in other words this is a semi nomi while the total attack of all monsters your opponent controls is more than that of all monsters you control if you control no monsters cool it's a free summon as long as they even control a well anything with an attack stat 100 or more zero counts as nothing so that does not work now you can target any number of beast beast warrior and or wing beast you control this is the activation part so it does target but it targets your own cards and and then you can return them to the hand so in other words then uh, return face up monsters your opponent controls equal to the number of cards you return to the hand and also for the rest of the turn alpha the master of beast cannot attack you directly okay that's cool and this is a hard once per turn effect so to kind of break this one down i know some people say that this card doesn't target for one thing it does target uh but it only targets your own cards. But when it comes to the returning part of the effect, that part does not target it. But there's a key thing that you should remember here is that if you try to max out and wipe an entire board, say you just free summon a bunch of stuff and then you bounce them all back. If you say you bounced for four and your opponent has four monsters, but then they chain and remove one of those monsters, you will bounce back all your cards because you have to just resolve as much as you can the first part of it does say return them to the hand and then because the then conjunction still requires the first part to be done then return face a monster your opponent controls uh equal to the number of cards you return if the numbers aren't equal you will bounce nada you'll be, bounce nothing back to their side so if they can manipulate their board uh they can use that as a form to dodge your alpha effect However, it's actually quite difficult because if you choose to bounce a low number of monsters, you target just Alpha himself. Remember, Alpha can technically target himself to bounce itself back, which is really useful to dealing with Dragoons. Uh, but you don't even have to do that. You just special summon out this card out. Dragoons is 3k without negation. This card summoning does not activate, so you can just summon it out and swing into Dragoons as long as there's no other crazy interaction, uh, which gives you a free kill. Uh, which is a decent trade in my opinion unless of course that uh, that card has negated something and it boosted itself up to 4k then then you can use this card as a bait to play around every other card afterwards because uh, dealing with dragoons isn't that hard if you can actually bait out the first card one for one it in some cases and since this is a free summon like pancrotops can't deal with the dragoons because it's just too small cannot be destroyed this one well does not destroy and it's big enough which is why this is such an ideal card to deal with dragoons ideally you just want to use less card target less cards uh instead and then you just bounce whatever that you can and it's actually the best way to actually use this card Okay, into the virtual world, this particular deck has a lot of potential compared to a lot of the other cards. I mean, the highest two potential would be Tri Brigade and this one. However, a ban list needs to kick in before they can really, really do damage. But this particular archetype has a lot of potential simply because they don't exactly have any restriction aside from you can't go into the links. But I want to talk about what actually works against them and why it works against them. So starting off with basically all of their monsters all of the monsters they can be ash if they activate their effect simply because all their summoning based effects contain a chunk that would send a card into the graveyard that's just part of their gimmick if this card is in your hand you can target one virtual world card you control send one virtual world card of a different card type monster spell or trap from your deck to the graveyard and if you do summon out this card 
That particular part of the effect means that Ash Blossom Joy Spring will always be able to negate the summoning effect. And if that happens, the rest of the effect will also not happen because Ash will negate the entire part of the effect. So Ash Blossom Joy Spring will always work on stopping any of the summon effect. But on top of that, what happens when you remove one of the cards that it targeted? What if you remove the card? Well, then it cannot summon simply because the card type is now missing because let's think back to black wings if black wings were summoned onto a black whirlwind but then the monster got removed because it is checking for an attack stat the attack stat is no longer there therefore it's invalid and therefore the black whirlwind does not perform a search uh, it's similar to that reasoning it is looking for something which is basically the card border and if the card border goes missing then it doesn't work anymore. So what happens is that, well, okay, so you can send one virtual world card of a different type. That part of the effect cannot happen. And because that part didn't happen, the conjunction of, and if you do special summon this card, you can't send the card, therefore you do not summon this card. And then the other part of the effect, then you can do something, something, something based off of the card that you uh, used. That particular part of the effect also does not happen. In other words, the whole line of effects don't work. Now, Virtual World City Kowloon states that place one Virtual World Gate from your deck face up onto your spell and trap zone. Yeah, that part of the effect, if it was just that, it would not be hashable. But because it says then you can apply one of the following effects uh, in sequence based off of the number of Virtual World Gate cards you control, because that exists, you can always use Ash Blossom against it because of the three plus effect. The three plus effect is send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. Yes, this is the similar logic to say Shadal Fusion. Why are you always able to use Ash Blossom Joy Spring against Shadal Fusion even if you don't control an extra deck monster is because it's checking during the uh, resolution and because you can't really guarantee that a, they won't have it, it is assumed that you can do it mid chain so you have to activate it in response to it it's uh it's a possibility this is not like activate one of these effects where they have to declare which effect and then there's that whole guaranteed thing that yeah they will do this kind of similar to the co-linking of light nightmare monsters if it's co-linked and they activate then yeah you can use uh, an ash blossom to stop it because it has a draw based effect but if they are not co-linked then you can't do it because there's no it's guaranteed that they will not be able to get their effect so this is the thing that is from the past i've talked about this before but i'm bringing the application to the new cards of kowloon so, so the tldr is ash blossom joy spring is very good against virtual world because it basically can touch most of the cards that are in this particular deck and the second thing is if whatever virtual world monster is targeting uh, if that target gets removed because it's unable to check the typing of that card, they will no longer be able to meet the rest of the conjunction. Therefore, it will not summon out a miss of the rest of the effects. So, yeah, that's a pretty big thing. If you want to learn how to counter this deck, uh, yeah, just find the right points to actually hit them. And that should summarize all the most common misrepresented game states and legal misplays are currently happening as well as covering you know zoo king alpha's ruling and also you know the basic general ruling that you should know for virtual world well i talk about i don't think there's actually too much to talk about mutants but i might talk about mutants if they become a bigger thing uh, anyways that is all i got for this video guys if you guys enjoyed this video smash the thumbs up button hit the like hit subscribe ding the notification bell if you guys want to help support this channel check out the patreon link down in the description i know there's a giveaway again that's going to be coming up for the triple boxes I, I guess three out of the 12 boxes that is going to be going out oh by the way all the zexel medals except for one has been mailed out one because uh the, i guess that winner took a little too long so i threw it back into the pool uh, we'll see where that one goes. I probably have to redraw. I have to send a, an, an email to uh, to Konami about that one. But uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that one, and uh, I'll let you guys know when the next draw is happening. I guess the droplet one is actually happening right now. So in the next couple of days, check your email to see if you won. I guess triple forbidden droplets from yours truly. And All right, so we're gonna be cracking open the package, the mystery package, guys. So let's just zoom in closer. Yes, I know there is an AAZ us a sky thunder. Okay, whoa. What is this? Okay, there's a piece of cardboard. Oh, 
Oh my god. Thank you for participating in the remote dual home sweepstakes. We... Please find the enclosed secret... Secret rare united we stand with blue foil lettering. We hope that you can to continue to enjoy remote duels and continue to participate in remote duels. Oh my god. I want the... Re oh, this is a case. Hey, there's no... Is this it? Oh, this is the actual unboxing of... A this is the giveaway that they ha I won the giveaway. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. I feel like this can be its own video. Yes, I got the SBPR001 United We Stand and the hard case. I already have one of these hard cases. Like, I have it, you know, keeping our old-school MST TV token. But now I get to put this one in here. Oh. 